walk with me talk with me free your mind with big g hey hey yo hey yo five miles g that's when we on five miles it's big g coming to you with another another walk another talk another opportunity to free your mind free your mind of what or whatever rids it i can't tell you what's in your head but in our community a lot of wrong a lot of negative a lot of inaccuracies have been put in our head so i'm just trying to free some of those inaccuracies up clear some of those inaccuracies up challenge some of those inaccuracies you know don't take my word for it you do your own research it's with a heavy heart it's with a heavy heart it's with a heavy heart that I come to you 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 with the sad news that Kobe Bryant tragically was killed in a helicopter crash tragically Tragically, he was killed in a car in a, in a helicopter accident yesterday. He was he was on a he was on a flight to his to the academy that he had co-sponsored. He co-sponsored the Mamba. The Mamba Academy, I do believe it was called the Mamba, the Mamba Academy. It was a place for aspiring basketball players, aspiring athletes to come and gain experience, gain knowledge in the area that they loved to play the reason i sound choppy is because i'm kind of at a loss for words you know an iconic an iconic hero such as kobe bryant is killed tragically at the age of 41 tragically I didn't know him personally, but you know, it's like an icon, shit. I don't need to know him personally. He don't need to know me personally to have effect, to have effect on me. I wanna send a, I wanna send a prayer of condolence out to his family, his wife, his daughters, I'm a father, I have daughters, I have a wife. I could not, I could not imagine, I could not imagine such a tragedy, having to face the results, the reality of such a tragedy. I was, I was perusing, I was perusing social media before I left and one of my good friends, one of my good friends, Mr. Hayes, 
went to we went to the same alma mater. But Mr. Hayes put it so eloquently. Shout out. Shout out to Mr. Hayes. You know who you are. But yeah, he said, you know, he was he was very poignant. I'm not I'm not a Lakers fan. I'm not. He had a few other things that he emphatically was not. I'm not this, I'm not that. But as a hooper, he used the term that I don't even hear no more. He said, but as a hooper, as a hooper, you had to be a fan of Kobe. If you was a hooper, and, I, and I'm a hooper, I consider myself a, a diehard basketball fan. I define diehard in the, in the sense of I would prefer to watch the Bulls first, then LeBron, then Giannis, then, you know, the greats. I would prefer to watch them first if I had a choice. But if nothing's else on, nothing else is on, I'm watching oh any what's up man? I'm watching any I'm watching any I'm watching hey bro Famo Yo Thanks man That's my man. That's my man. Used to be on, used to be at Bubba Career with me. I know that's him for a fact. I never forget a face. But uh, what was I saying? Oh, I was, I was talking about how my man, Mr. Hayes, put on the, put on the platform. On one of the platforms that he's not a he's not a Lakers fan. He's not a he's not a this fan, he's not a that fan. He a he a, he a fan of basketball, a hooping and Kobe was so cold, he made you respect him. What's up bro? What's good? How you doing man? Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, yes, shit. sir. <laughs> real love, real love. Yes, but yeah, man, you know I'm on my five, giving my uh, giving my honest rendition to the people about what's going on in our community. So yeah, and um, I'll afford you the information. Yeah, so I, you I, can. I got a new number. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop by your crib and get to you. Yes, sir, man. I'm hey, glad hey. to see you, man. Man, real love, bro. Yeah. I love you, man. I love you too. Man. I'll see you in a minute when I get back. Right, yep. That was an example of mature. That was an example of mature camaraderie. Me and the young man live in the same community. We facing the same challenges. And we have similar we have a similar similar idea about the things that are taking place in our community. But man, let me get back to my boy, Mr. Hayes, who made a poignant, he made a poignant. I'm da I damn near wanna, I damn near wanna read the post again so I can be much more accurate, but the basic, basically the post alluded to, alluded to it, that Kobe either you either was a fan of his because you was from the Lakers or you hated him because you wasn't a Lakers fan. Like you hated him. You hated Kobe because it's like, damn, this, you know when he get on the court against whoever. He was going to be Kobe. You know? It's... I'm glad it's a... It's it's really tragic, but you know, 
I read a lot of posts, but that was one that kind of hit. That was one that kind of hit. You know, it struck a chord with me personally because that's exactly how it, you know it is. That's exactly how I feel. I'm a hooper first. I watch any basketball if it's on. High school, grade school, I watch if that's what's on, I watch it. And I've noticed in a room full of men, it's it's certain levels of interest. You know, typically it gotta be the a, a very interesting game on either your home team or a very a very entertaining marquee player. Besides that, you know, I know cast at all. I don't even want to look at that. I, I'm not. I'm a hooper. Like that's the point I'm making. I'm a hooper. I, you know, and and Mr. Hayes brought it brought it back to my understanding with that term hooper. So he said, you know, Kobe Bryant made you respect him, ultimately making you love him because you gotta you have to respect him, and then you can't hate him. If you understand the, the ramifications of basketball, you can't be mad at a you can't be mad at a young man who had an opportunity to play the sport that he loved and was born with a certain skill set because of his father's influence. You know, Jelly Bean Bryant was already a household name in terms of the NBA and this your daddy so Mr. Hayes shout out to you bro I need to get up with you too man but we'll do that but yeah that's exactly how I felt when I read the post Kobe is a beast Period. Kobe is a beast. Exclamation point. Like, you know, I've been hearing a lot of comparisons to Michael Jordan, and he was the one player that was very, very close and had his own attributes that set him apart from Michael Jordan. But he was of a different era. I'm a Michael Jordan fan, so I'm speaking biasly. I'm literally a Michael Jordan. I grew up watching Mike in my era. I'm a hooper. I'm a fan of the sport, so I'm well aware of Kobe. And then he come along being just like Mike, you know, so. But Kobe was the one. He was the one athlete that was probably the most similar to Mike, you know. Uh, I'm going to say this as a Michael Jordan fan. I love LeBron James is a is a is a bigger is a larger icon than Jordan to me. Before I before y'all hold on. Iconic like I don't know I don't know how many academies Jordan built. But uh, LeBron built an academy. He paid for the tuition. He he funded the whole thing. So that's a that puts him past the gym shoe king, you know. Which you look anywhere in the world, somebody got on a Bulls jersey or some Jordans. I'm talking about anywhere in the world. So there's no there's no comparison to that type of icon iconic status. There's no comparison to a Michael Jordan icon status. Unless you Kobe Bryant, you know? Kobe Bryant possessed the uh, skills. He possessed the tenacity. What's up? He possessed the... He possessed the hunger to be a champion. And even in his championship status, even, even as a champion, that was some that was some shit some stuff sometimes you walk in it like i think i did um
he was probably one of the most fiercest competitors you've ever, ever witnessed, ever. Kobe had that scowl in his, in his brow that was, you know, that's not even nothing to worry about. How he looked, why he frowned up at you. I'm talking about when he get on the court, he, he had this way of looking at his opponent with this little look in his face that I'm sure many of you, but my point in that is, that's not even what you should be concerned about, really. He going, when he get the ball, he, he finna, what? Then on defense, he finna, what? Don't, what? What? So, I'm glad as a Michael Jordan fan, as a true Michael Jordan fan who grew up in the Michael Jordan era. <gasps> Excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that Kobe Bryant grew up an era later because... You know, Mike is a undisputed king. You know, he 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 stopped a few people. He stopped a few people that deserve championships from getting. You know, the the most two, the most famous two is Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing. Like they they'll tell you, Michael Jordan is the reason I never became a champion. And you know, if either one of those guys had a Kobe Bryant on their team at the time, you know, that would have been the difference. Like Mike was the difference, Kobe would have been the difference to help them get over a hump here and there. You know, I ain't saying he'd have been no, I don't know, but you know, I read Kobe's book, Kobe. It's an easy read too. One of the one of the easier books I read, Kobe. But the man was the man, for some of y'all that didn't know, he grew up in the he grew up on the NBA court. Like he came out, he was born to Jelly Bean Bryant. And he was playing in the NBA. He was playing in the NBA. And he was being a an unconditional father bringing his son to practice. So his son was a baby in the cradle on the side. That's the book say, the book say his, his teammates on the New York Knicks, I think that's who he played for. Didn't really get into who he played for, but it talked about how Jelly Bean was at practice with his small child, not quite an infant, you know, but definitely in a cradle, in a crib, not big enough to get up. All he could do is lay there. So I understand that's... Basketball is in his. What up? Box, hold on, man, hold up. What's up? This my, this my residential, my residential entertainment broker. He fulfills my cinematic desires. Movie Box, that's his name. His name is Box, but I put the movie on there because Movie Box. Movie Box. It might look like I'm going into a White Castle, y'all, which I am, but it's this is White Castle's slash his office. What's up, man? What's good? You got it. You still owed me five dollars, but we good. No, no, I didn't. Oh, we, we done it wrong. We did. Come on. Come on outside. I don't want her to say it. We done it wrong. Look. 
We good now. I didn't squash that. You gave me the five, right? Mm -hmm. Then I gave you the five back because we had to give a change for a team. You ain't give me the five back. I did. I gave you the five back. Then you gave us two fives. No. Listen, listen. So, I had $15 in my pocket. Right. When I walked away, I had $5 and four movies. Okay. I don't know. Well, I listen, I'm just saying, I gave you 10. Right. That's what that means because I owed you five. Right? right? I, don't know. I owed you five, yeah. No, I like the. I, this, li, listen, okay. if we can't talk, yeah, we can. then we ain't, we cool. Like, that's, that's a, I'm proud that you, you came to me because that's, that's how I go. You gotta, if you close mouth, don't get fed. Right. Move it, move it. But yeah, so I had $15 starting, okay. and then I walked away with five and four movies. No. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, I just want to see what you got. So when I cut some hair a little later, I'll probably hit your line. In. All right. You see my, the, you see the, uh, the channel I sent you? Yeah, yeah. No, I ain't got a chance to watch it yet. Yeah, look at it, man. It's okay. Some, it's some uh, interesting stuff on okay, there. Okay, okay. That's what I'm. You on, that. you on it now? Okay. Yeah, I see you got it on, on candid channel. No, you ain't candid. I just told you about it. Okay. So, but it's all good. Okay. How much? How much you want for that? No, you ain't got to take it out. This motherfucker do everything. Look at this motherfucker. This motherfucker do everything. Damn. This motherfucker do everything. Ooh, and it's a shark. Yeah. It's a shark. Like some motherfucker. Hey, I got, I got, I got something for you, box, but I don't want to carry it. I'm, I be, but you know you be busy. I be hitting you and you be out. And I ain't, you know, so I respect your hustle and you know. I'm gonna get up with y'all though. I appreciate you. So Kobe, he was a baby. He was a baby. You feel me? He was a baby in a crib in a, on the NBA basketball court. He wasn't just on any court. Like, I'm a hooper, so I'm going to break it down because I got time. I can. He, he a hooper. Like, I'm a hooper, so I'm going to break it down because I can. He, he a baby. He a baby. So anything you expose a baby to, whether they want to or not, whether they like it or not, it's going to be a part of them. Now, if they, if they don't like it, what you're exposing them, is just going to be a small part of them that they really don't, you know. Oh, I used, to, I used to dabble a little bit in this now. But if they like it, if they grow up and, you know, you're old enough to make decisions and you like something that you was exposed to, oh, my goodness. You've been... Something has been introduced to you before you can even understand what what it is you like. So that was Kobe Bryant's situation. He was a baby in an NBA gym on a his dad was on an iconic basketball team already. So just the ball hitting the floor, just the rhythm of the basketball hitting the floor. Just the rhythm of the basketball hitting the floor was inbred in his psyche. That's like a part of his thinking. Had a ball bounce. Which you have to understand as a hooper, anything that can give you an advantage as the as a as a an athlete, anything that can give you an advantage that's fair, you know, that's within the rules, you use it. So you don't think him just feeling, just knowing how basketball sound when he hit the floor, he got a, he got an innate, he has an innate sense for this game because 
he was a baby and the ball was dribbling and it was vibrating. That's what we made of vibrations. The ball was vibrating through him. You know, that was a baby. I'm going somewhere and I'm taking my time because I can. He was a baby. So then he became a toddler, you know, dribbling on the side, emulating what he see. You know, eight, nine years old. He just, he on the side. He playing too at the, you know, at his, at his grade school. But he a shorty, like he, you know. So then he started, he started challenging during the breaks, like they be playing, they practicing, and he on the side, and they have a break, and they come over and talk to him, because remember, they grew up with him, so you have a nucleus of men that's like uncles that's coming over, saying, hey, what's up, Kobe, shorty? You know, playing on, play, you know, giving them fight, whatever. That went from that to, hey, my dad's friend, you want to play me in a one-on-one? -on -one? And you talking about a nine-year-old kid, 10 years old, challenging a full-grown NBA player to a game of one-on-one. -on -one. So Kobe said after he challenged them, they accepted the challenge. You know, hey, oh, that's cute. And they was, you know, I know the, I know I'm playing the son of a great, but he's still a kid, so I'm gonna take it easy on him and all. And they was beating him, you know. Kobe said he was playing, and they was beating him. They didn't, he didn't he didn't indicate how long he was being defeated, but he did tell in the book that he challenged. He challenged, he challenged NBA players and they accepted and he was losing, he was losing to some of them. He was losing to them when he began to challenge them. In Kobe fashion, he was a baby beast then. He was a baby beast. He didn't know it, but he was a baby beast. He was determined to beat them so he practiced and he worked on his game according to him the book is kobe that's what i'm talking about he practiced and practiced so those same players that was beating him and taking it easy on him he he, he indicated at age 11 he started winning 11 and 12 years old you were 12 year old little boy he wasn't little, he was probably, you know, a little taller, a little longer than the average 12 year old. But that wasn't no, you know, he wasn't dominating with his size. He was dominating with his skills. So, Kobe say in the book, the book that I read, Kobe, easy read. I encourage any young man that's not a reader. Man, I don't really read books, man. Pick up Kobe's book. It's 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 an easy read. It's I think it's like I don't know, 400 pages or something like that. But it's real easy. It's real entertaining. If you're a basketball fan, if you're a sports fan, you know, you should pick his book up. So he he 11 and 12 years old. Everybody pulling over for He 11 and 12 years old beating NBA players. So Kobe Bryant saying, oh, now keep in mind, he going to practice with his daddy. His daddy is doing, his daddy is, is, is the babysitter. <laughs> he just happened to do his sitting in the NBA gym. So Kobe is going to this practice, challenge these NBA players begin begin getting defeated beat taking it easy on him it go from that to he started beating them you know it became a challenge then because now you got nba players saying oh man shorty beat you so then he like 
I took it easy on him. You know, Kobe saying he hearing, he know this. He hearing, you know, they're alluding to, we took it easy on him. He a kid. It went from that to they was all out playing against him in a one-on-one. -on -one. And he was winning handedly by the age of 13. He was winning handedly. He was beating NBA players handedly by the age of 13. It had gotten so bad. It had gotten so bad in the sense of him being good that players began to worry that their reputation as an NBA player would take a negative hit. It would be, it would be a blemish. It would be a blemish on their NBA scouting record, if you will. It would be a blemish to 